Hey guys, welcome back. It's time. We're going back into the, the Reddit hole. We have a lot of threads to look at here, so we won't spend too much time on each one of them. But we're going to look at some, uh, usually what is questions, uh, usually what is people looking for advice. But there's also a ton of extra interesting ones that I want to touch on here. The, the, the flow was good. I usually just scroll through the, uh, the main page here of r slash uh, Pokemon TCG to see what's going on. Get a pretty good feel for for what's what the market's doing and there was a lot of good ones right away usually i have to scroll down a bit to find some some decent some decent threads uh but we're all good here all right first one logic man 48 who says i don't think the style of the artwork in this card is appreciated enough uh and i didn't want to weigh in on this uh, i know it's not a question but uh we're we're, we're going to touch on this it's, it's weird because um people I mean, there's a lot of a lot of artwork that's underappreciated, uh, and uh, man, this though from one of the commons, I think I've I've heard more about it than than many other cards. Uh, it's it stands out. It definitely stands out. It's like a Christmas kind of theme that's going on here, uh, which is interesting. Uh, but we also got to mention the fact that like the people love the Giratina. Is I, I think you could probably argue that the Giratina is nicer than this one, but I think if this Magmar was the entire, uh, you know, face of the card, if it was uh, an alt art, if it if you expand the image out, maybe blow it up a little bit, I'm pretty sure people would be going nuts for this Magmar. Um, unfortunately, the value isn't there, so maybe it gets overlooked quite a bit, which is the case with most stuff. Same, did I say it was the same? It's the same artist as the Giratina, uh, is kind of why I'm making that comparison. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. And then there's also, there's like this weird appreciation that can happen when people are looking at older cards, but I think that's just because they're not as common. I, one of my favorite parts of opening new sets when they come out, uh, is the, the fresh, the fresh artwork, the fresh look at the, the commons and uncommons. All the chase cards are usually spoiled pretty regularly, um, in abundance, uh, if you spend as much time looking at Pokemon stuff uh, as I do, or even a fraction of it, you're going to see all the chase cards that are coming out. Uh, spoilers are definitely a thing, but typically people aren't really interested or spoiling the uh, the lesser stuff. Uh, and I think that like usually um, just opening or seeing a set... Um, it's seeing the same. That's that's why I like main sets more than I do uh, like the subsets because y you get a better variety. You're not seeing the same like commons and uncommons constantly. Uh, not that there aren't good artworks in those like subsets, the smaller sets. Um, and I think that's why I like Crown Zenith so much. It was a nice balance. It was a big enough set with like the the non chase cards uh, that you weren't seeing the same stuff over and over again. Like Hidden Fates was pretty bad for it there there are not that many cards i don't know how many cards there are off the top of my head uh, but getting the same cards in every pack and then hoping that you got whatever the shiny the shiny pokemon that you were looking for at the back of the pack doesn't uh, not really doing it for me i know a lot of people like shining fates or not shining fates hidden fates uh it sets like that shining fates i guess as well um although i think shining fates the main set was quite a bit larger i don't know anyway regardless uh that's what uh, that's what we're thinking on this one let's see what uh we have Cauliflower, who says this artist in particular has very popu has been very popular lately. Famous, of course, for their Giratina V alternate artwork. True. And yes, the the Tina is beautiful. They did the, the they did the Magic Carp that's coming out too soon, uh, which is also a, a fan favorite. Even though um, it's I think it's just a, an illustration rare. I gotta I gotta get the lingo down on the new stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think the, the Magikarp is popular. I mean, Magikarp, for, I mean, for some reason, there's a lot of people that like uh, Magikarp, very popular Pokemon. I guess it was. It's a Gen 1 Pokemon. It's uh, it's popular probably firstly for that reason, but also it's kind of like, it's kind of got something going for it, where it's like a weak Pokemon that turns into a Gyarados, a uh, weak Pokemon that turns into a strong Pokemon. So, and, and then all the, like, anime uh, connotations, you know, all of that stuff kind of builds it up to, to definitely be a fan favorite, which is, it's, it's, uh, it's something, it's definitely something, do you have, uh, the, there definitely aren't as many Magikarp collectors as there are by Pikachu and Charizard, 
Uh, and man, in a different timeline, I'd love to see what happens if Charizard is not like featured as the bad boy rebel without a cause, super strong Pokemon that it was. Uh, what if what if they made it extra wimpy? All it did was cry and lose battles. Like would that would everyone still want to collect the Charizard? What if what if Bulbasaur uh, was like the the mega edge lord Pokemon? I want to know. Charizard collectors, what what do you think? If Charizard was a, a crybaby uh, in <laughs> in the anime, um, and if he wasn't a hollow, would would everyone still want him? If he just a regular rare, or if he you know if he was a chunky like uh, like Venusaur, Venusaur was more more fit, more bad to the bone. Does that change your opinion? Personally, I was a, a Boba Bulbasaur picker, even though I had red version. Uh, I think that's uh, that was the way to go. I mean, not just the fact that it's it's clearly the best choice uh, for the first two gyms because I mean you're going up against rock and water. I mean, you're going to do that with a Charmander. I mean, you gotta you gotta suffer through it, I guess. All right, so next one we gotta we gotta get moving here. We got lots of things to look at, and uh, this is only the second one. We have Zealous Ideal dash spell 31 quite that is quite the the username uh who posts got nobody with who i can share my togepi unfinished collection well it's a good thing that's that's the thing you got the internet um there's always going to be someone that's going to look at and appreciate your stuff right now we're gonna we're gonna do that together uh we have the the togepi binder um there are a lot of people um and again this is probably the case for most if not all pokemon which is weird to say there's a lot of pokemon that are like really uh, obscure or strange that, uh, you know, there's probably someone out there with a binder, uh, who are, or, or that's their favorite Pokemon, which is wild to say. Maybe we do, we need to like create a list, uh, to make sure that one of each exists. And then maybe we can just recruit people to be the collector of like the, the really obscure Pokemon that, uh, that no one wants to, no one wants to favor it. I guess with the newer stuff, when it comes out, there's probably less of it or less likely to happen, but even then, maybe not, because if it's if the Pokemon only has like one card, shout out to, to Mantike uh, in English. All right, so we got the binder here. Very nice. Good choice on the binder. We got a nice uh, side loading. Uh, oh, this guy's, this guy's escaping a little bit here. Um, you probably want to put them in some sort of sleeves. It would, it, it might prevent them from sliding back and forth as well. Um, even if they're not in like in top condition or you're not totally worried about it it still might make for a better experience flipping through the binder uh, but this is cool this is like no matter what make sure you're collecting what you actually like make sure you're buying stuff that you actually like um don't don't worry about it. if you like togepi just don't don't worry about it we have down here it says i've been teased a lot for my unconditional love of togepi over the years never understood why crying laughing face so I mean, as long as you're not making it weird, like, I don't want to even get into how you would make that weird, but if you love Togepi, if you love any Pokemon, and you want to collect all the cards of that particular Pokemon, uh, whether they're in, you know, a certain condition or not, go to town. This is, this is awesome. Same thing with artist binders, if you really like certain artists. This is like, I don't want to say this is necessarily an affordable way to collect, because sometimes it, it's not. Uh, when you're looking for obscure or different language or like different language is usually more difficult than it is expensive. Uh, it can be expensive, I'm sure. Uh, when you get into error stuff, when you get into like really obscure, if you, if, if you got Pokemon that you like that are on like trophy cards and stuff like that, that's where, um, and then don't even worry about if you have to omit those, those cards or maybe you get them someday. But, uh, again, regardless, I mean, other than Charizard, I guess even, even a budget Charizard collection is going to be pretty expensive compared to, to most other Pokemon. I mean, Togepi, um, I mean, I don't know what, like, the most expensive Togepi card would be. I'm sure he's been on some kind of, like, really ridiculously rare, hard-to-find expensive card, but regardless, um, this is awesome to see. Uh, this is, this is, to me, is, like, an indicator that you, you love the hobby, you love Pokemon cards, you love collecting, you love Pokemon in general that you're collecting, something that isn't it's not like oh i'm collecting the same thing as everyone else the new hype thing i'm going after that this is like you're on your own little side quest here and i think people need to appreciate um this more collect what you like that's it how you like what you like 
if you want to grade it, by all means, get it graded. I, mean, I think you should still watch the channel here. People sort of don't understand that. I, yes, I don't think there's value in grading. I don't value grading. Um, but I'm not one to say that like you can't or if you want to correct, like collect graded cards in a certain grade or from a certain company, by all means, do your research uh, and know that you're not like wasting your money on it. But if you see the value in that stuff, then uh, I'm not I'm not here to stop you. So that's a mis misconception. Um, I still think you should value your own opinion and that you should be buying the card, not the not the grade, not the grading company. But uh, but yeah, just had to get on a little tangent there. Rocco D13 says, thanks for sharing. Togepi is def one of those Pokemon that I tend to just skip right on through, which I now realize it's a shame. I didn't pay attention to it before. Togepi has some nice artwork in card form for sure. Yeah, I, I think that's the same thing with all Pokemon. Uh, and uh, even even going and looking through uh, all of the inexpensive cards from a certain artist, for example, we're going to get back to that, um, is, it's kind of cool. It's kind of see like to see how the different artists either do the same Pokemon or to see how an artist does all of the different Pokemon that they've had the chance to make Pokemon cards with is pretty cool. This is also kind of cool that we, we now have another Togepi, Togepi lover who uh, reached out. And that's the thing too. The, the beauty of the internet, there's lots of Pokemon people, lots of Pokemon people that you can make friends with. And if you're lacking Pokemon friends, come on into the Discord. Um, it, it's It's... Come on, come on in there. If there's, if you want to open cards and you don't have anyone to do it with uh, in real life, whether you're somewhere remote, if you're a little bit shy or whatever, uh, if if your real friends, your real life friends are like, I don't want to open Pokemon cards with you, you absolute nerd, then you should you should be in the Discord. Come on in. Uh, if you want to open cards, if you want to show off what you got, uh, we have tonight is the uh, the happy hour chat on Saturdays, uh, most Saturdays, if not all Saturdays. Uh, we have the uh, Discord voice and video chat, so come on in there, come hang out. Usually, open some Pokemon cards. We'll talk some Pokemon, talk some other crap. Uh, it's a it's a good time, it's a good, a good spot to make some friends, uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good bunch that uh, that are usually there. Something it varies who's who's uh, who's showing up, but for the most part, the uh, the people that are in there, they're very nice, they're very kind. Um, yeah, we're gonna razz on each other a little bit. Uh, but it's all in good fun, um, and I can I can say without a shadow of a doubt that the, everyone that's in the Discord that's committed enough to be in there and hanging out uh, is they're fans of Pokemon. They like it. Also, there's a there's a pretty good variety even within uh, the Discord itself that that people are uh, collecting different things. And yeah, I mean that's that's what it's all about. Collect what you like. Um, again, I guess is the moral of the story. All right, we have posted by D slash A underscore. I almost read the two, the two hours ago, too. Um, <laughs> it's like a, cereal, like a cereal, like R2-D2. Are we, getting, are we getting into that right now? We got Gyarados EX. Very cool. Um, Gyarados EX number 225 from my first pack since I was eight. So this is cool to see. I love to hear stories about when people get back into the hobby. I think it's absolutely awesome to find out how or why. Um... It says, my friend recently got into collecting cards again, and we decided to go and buy a pack of Pokemon cards each. First time since I was a kid, and I pulled this beauty. So, Scarlet and Violet, I know everyone's like, oh, it's so easy to pull everything on in Scarlet and Violet. The bad boy is pretty, it's pretty hard to pull. That and the Arcanine. Um, I think I I think I pulled like three of one and one of the other. Um, I'm, they're probably the same pull rate as each other. Uh, but these things are pretty, they're, they're not exactly easy to pull. Uh, and very cool pull for your first pack since you got back into it. Um, and it's cool to see that even with the Scarlet and Violet, I know a lot of people hate on it. Like, it's weird. People like things get popular and unpopular for sometimes for no reason. I think we need a little bit more time uh, with the new Pokemon for people to really, uh, really appreciate them or like them. There's always that like that little break in phase with the new generation where people. Uh, are like these Pokemon are stupid. They're just making Pokemon out of uh, animals and items. That that <laughs> it's always kind of been that way. That's how it works. Um, and uh, I think for everyone, if they spend enough time looking at it, you're gonna find some Pokemon that you like from every generation. Um, unless you just hate most Pokemon, in which case it's weird that you're they they're still collecting Pokemon or thinking about buying the new sets because 
that's the thing with the new generation. I love it. I'm excited for it. Uh, and then I think part of that appreciation is the fact that if you play the games, then you already have that connection with these new Pokemon. Um, if maybe if you play the card game, which I suggest everyone at least try it out and learn how it works. If, even if you're a Pokemon collector primarily, uh, try out the game. Uh, you can do so online. Hopefully PTCG Live is not as broken as it has been in the last little bit. I think it's supposed to, if it hasn't already gone out of its beta whatever that is means for in terms of like how finished it is it seems like it it was getting better in terms of like performance it still looks like crap in my opinion uh but uh it, it seems like it was getting better in terms of glitches and stuff like that it was fine for a while uh, and now it's just broken again like the timers they somehow broke the timers again where it, it's sometimes it just ends your turn sometimes it locks itself up sometimes like i don't it's it's bad it's pretty bad hopefully they fix it um pretty pretty soon especially now that um i think crown zenith was the last set for ptcgo and then they're shutting it down I, i'm assuming that there's no like you can't play it whatsoever at any point after after the next little bit but regardless you're going to want to be playing with the new sets anyway so um it kind of that would kind of fall off anyway i don't know how that would work exactly i guess it would always it would, it would just be like whatever standard was up until regardless. Um, yeah. And then also I think it's a hundred and is it 125 packs? Make sure you have 125 sealed packs on your PTCG O account before you transfer it over to live. Uh, and then also keep in mind that live is man, it's glitchy. It's glitchy right now. So, um, Hopefully that fixes itself up. I know there's a, there's some people in the Discord again uh, that have just started playing. So if you want to start out with that, if you want to try it out, uh, no better time. And again, that's it's a good way to not burn yourself out on Pokemon stuff is just to, to dabble in a little bit of everything. Dabble in the game, in the card game. Dabble in collecting. Dabble in some old stuff. Dabble in if you want to open a couple packs of the new stuff. Again, opening packs is not a financially beneficial I guess that's the best way to put it, uh, way to, way to collect. But if you have fun with it and you enjoy it, it's, it's, it's worth it. And then keep in mind, like, you're not necessarily going to pull, like, if there's one card you want from a set and you don't want anything else, that's kind of rough. Um, and you could be creating some work from, you know, for yourself. If you're, if you're trying to get rid of the other stuff, if you're trading or selling any of the stuff that you don't want or anything that's duplicates, it's, um, it, it, you can make it more affordable, but it's still going to cost you money. So here we go. We got PGJ1997, who says, this is from one pack. What? This is a, that's, a good, that's a pretty good pack. So we were already talking about the uh, the, the Arcanine and the, the Gyarados. Um, and we got the Maridon, uh, S SIR. I was going to say SIR. That's Japanese. Uh, illustration Rare. Special Illustration Rare. Maridon EX. That's the name of a good pack. I don't know what... What's the the best possible pack? Would it be like, would it be Miriam, uh, the Miriam S A R, and then the Miriam Full Art? I guess it would be like the Goddess of God packs. If that's happened at any point, that I would love to see that. Hopefully, it was captured on on camera. That would be that'd be insane. The most value coming out of one one pack. And man, the, the, I know people are like, oh my God, the, the values, the values, they're tanking. They're tanking on the old Scarlet and Violet. It happens with every set when it comes out. Um, they're going to be at a high when people and players are looking for the cards themselves. It's a new thing. Everyone wants the new thing. It's, well, not necessarily always wants the new thing, but usually people are zoned in on what's the hot thing at the moment. So you're paying a premium for that. You're paying for the fact that like not a lot of this product has been open yet, so... It, it's natural. It's It feels good. I think the set size feels good. I think the new pull rates, I, I feel like they're going to get harder as the sets progress. That's kind of kind of what happened in the last generations, I guess. Um, definitely, like, your, your Sun and Moon and your Sword and Shield. Um, well, even, like, the early Sword and Shield was pretty hard to complete just because he had so many of those chase cards. Um, I think it's in a good spot. I know people are... Regardless of what or how the set is, is is obtainable or not obtainable, people are going to be upset that it's either too hard or too easy. Um, but in my opinion, it, I think it's it's right in the right spot. All right, we have Flutter Flutter with two R's, who says, "What should I do with this pon Poncho Pikachu?" 
Um, you cherish it, I guess. Well, I mean, no one knows better than yourself. Did you buy it? To, what did, why, why did you buy it? Clearly, uh, just a little bit of a like a flex post, which I mean, it's a, it's a weird way to weird flex, but uh, very beautiful card. I know a lot of people love these. Um, not exactly my my cup of tea, um, and uh, not something that I would be seeking out, but they're cool. You got to be very careful with these ponchos. There's a lot of fake ones. Uh, there's fake ones in graded cases that are graded fake graded cases. Um, but yeah, be careful. Uh, and if it is a graded copy, make sure you're looking up the, the certain number to make sure that it actually matches the hollow pattern. It's pretty distinct on these bad boys since it goes throughout the entire card. But again, be careful. Fake ones on the on the prowl, on the on the loose. I used to collect back in 2016, and I've been going through the collection and found this. Should I get it graded? I don't really know how to approach it since it's been a while. Also, I'm pretty sure there is two cards in here. Thank you for the help. Um. Did it come with another card? Someone probably knows and can speak on this a little bit better than I can. Uh, maybe it does come with another card. I mean, the card on the back is clearly, it's got an actual card back. I don't know how you can't tell if there's two cards in there or not. Like, surely you can, uh, not from this camera angle, you, you can't really. But um, also, we got we got the championships play mat. So it's clearly someone that kind of knows what they're doing, even if they've been out of the hobby for a while, 2016. Um, and then somebody, I'm sure somebody down in the comment section can identify what, uh, what playmat this is and where it came from, what year it came from. Can we, um, if it's post 2016, maybe he, maybe he bought it recently, but I, maybe it's around that era. We can, we can do a deep dive and figure out, uh, what's going on here. But yes, um, I don't know. Are you attached to it? It's probably, uh, pretty expensive at this point in time. I don't think it was all that expensive when it came out, but... Uh, I think that the price has gone up on those considerably, and uh, n not to mention the fact that, like, um, I mean, they're valuable enough to the point that we're we're getting we're getting the fakes. The fakes are on the loose. The fakes, not just the fakes, but the fakes that are trying to pretend to be the real thing, because you know that's usually what happens when something becomes valuable. And there's no better example than like the the Charizards. The base set Charizards uh, have been the faked. Many, many times. Maybe, is there like, there's got to be a direct correlation between card value. Well, no, maybe not. Because there's a lot of very rare, very expensive cards that don't have fakes. Well, not, at least not ones that you see very often, if at all. All right, bought 30 packs of Chilling Rain from Best Buy today. These are the polls, definitely not disappointed. So, um, unless Best Buy had some kind of awesome offer, uh, the, he shouldn't have been buying 30 loose packs from Best Buy, uh, just in terms of like financial value. Uh, it did seemingly work out here. We got some alt arts. We got a few alt arts. Um, to get um, three alt arts and 30 packs was extremely lucky. Um, it didn't, like, none of the Vs are all very inexpensive, but that's uh, that's pretty good. It's also, it's weird. Remember, like, there was a point in time when Chilling Rain came out. People were pretty excited about Chilling Rain. I don't think I don't think it was like hyped to oblivion when it came out. People were just excited because it was the new set. Uh, and then after the sets, after like your battle styles and Chilling Rain and stuff like that, they kind of got put on the back burner. Uh, called Chilling Pain, the people didn't like it, and now it's kind of already coming back into being something that people appreciate, which is weird. You would think it would take maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, maybe it's the fact that the like the price of the booster boxes actually went up, but yeah, it's uh, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing, and that's kind of the um, uh, appreciate. Uh, don't necessarily chase the same thing that everyone's chasing because you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. I think I don't know what the like the lows of lows. I think there was booster boxes on clearance at one point in time. I think PK was saying something, he got him like 80 bucks or something crazy. So like, that's the what the appreciation was down to. Uh, now you got people posting online, flexing. Uh, but very lucky, very awesome that you got some sick, nasty pulls. That is three alt arts and 30 packs is, that is wild. That is absolutely wild. I'm not saying that you can't do it, um, that it can't happen. But most of the time, if you're opening 30 packs, you're not getting any alt arts on, on average. So uh, you did good. 
All right, we have safe underscore development 9930, who says, don't hate me, post from 20 Evolving Skies packs. This one stings a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Uh, two lacing on VMAXs and on Brion. So you did outdo the, the last person there. This is crazy. Three VMAX alt arts, two rainbow trainers from 20 packs. That is, that is wild. That is, uh, that is, I don't, not totally sure what the premise of the second picture is here, but, um, bottom middle damage to moon brown cries, but grateful. To, oh, oh, it's got a little scratch there. I mean, you know what? I think I would have, even if my moon brown, when I pulled it, when I finally pulled it, not after 20 packs, after 3,711 packs, I think it was, uh, even if it had that little scratch on it, it wouldn't bother me. It would be going in the binder. I mean, it's at that point, it kind of makes it a binder copy. Um, it does look like it's pretty well centered, so it, kind of, it does kind of suck that it's got the little scratch on the back of it. And I don't think even if you contact the Pokemon company that they would even replace that. They'd be like, no, no that it's good enough. Uh, and I think it is for most people. It sucks that you can't if if your intention was to grade it, you're gonna it's gonna do probably pretty bad unless they miss the scratch that's on it. All right, speaking of Chilling Rain, we have here Chilling Rain is such an underrated set. Man, I never thought I would see the day. Well, I did think I would see the day. I, just, I never thought I would see the day so soon that people now like Chilling Rain again. Um, but also, I guess, I don't know if they just pulled these um, or they're just appreciating them. But regardless, that is, uh, yeah, there's, there's a couple of nice cards. There's a lot of really nice cards. Um, and people kind of forgot about the the older alt arts in favor of like the newer the newer stuff. And then everyone kind of tunnel visioned on like the Evolving Skies uh, kind of hype. Um, but yeah, I think also the hate on these older sets that have the alt arts, even though everyone loves the alt arts is, is the fact that like the pull rates were just so much worse compared to things with trainer gallery. Like you're basically doubling your odds of getting something in a pack, um, like in terms of a V or better, uh, or like a trainer gallery card. So I think, I think people are forgetting that that was just, that just wasn't there. So you can just pretend that, um, pretend that you're getting, you know, a trainer gallery card and one one on every three packs, uh, as well as your your reader better. Uh, then it kind of puts it into perspective. Uh, but it does it does feel a little bit bad going back, and then especially like you open you open Crown Zenith, and then you go back to opening um, early Sword and Shield. Like there's a there's a huge difference, especially if you only have a you know a small amount of packs and you don't hit anything. You're feeling it. So I think that's the the frustration there. We have next Monkey Bean 415 who says Mail Day O. Um, so this is interesting. We got mail service. Am I right? Um, this, this is pretty rare. So usually letter mail uh, is it's, it's pretty safe. It's usually sorted with the other mail. Uh, it does go through like machinery and stuff like that in certain locations, uh, depending on where you're sending it. Uh, I'm going to say this is probably the tape all over the outside that might be to blame for this getting snagged up in um, in some of that sorting machinery. So don't you don't need to tape the outside of the envelope. Um, I, usually you want to use like a smaller envelope if possible um, so that you're, you're not like, uh, I guess I got, I got one here. So like small as possible that will fit like your top loader or semi-rigid inside the uh, the envelope itself. Uh, and then just barely that. I've seen. You don't use the the long boys that are going to get folded over. You're going to have people accidentally bending stuff. Um, I think in this case, it's it's kind of lucky that it wasn't. I mean, and that's probably the reason why it was shipped the way it was shipped. Um, although I don't, I'm not totally sure on why. Maybe they were trying to like make it waterproof or something with the tape all over, slopped all over the back of it. Um, but regardless, we we got snagged up. We got eaten up. Um, it sucks that a card got uh, destroyed, but um, and I don't, I'm not sure why they didn't show what the card was, but they did update here and said, and uh, no one had asked. But the fact that no one asked is kind of weird. But it was a Flareon VMAX promo. Yeah, so the, I mean, beautiful card. It sucks that it got damaged, but I think he says here that he, he only paid like 15 bucks for it. Um, so it sucks. It's unfortunate. Mail can get ruined, whether it's in in your plain white envelope or whether it's in a bubble mailer, you know, it sometimes it gets run over by, by a delivery vehicle. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen stuff come like soaking wet 
it's it just it's gonna happen um but yeah don't don't tape the crap out of the envelope if you want to put like a little piece of tape or something um i don't know why this is like taped all over the place it's it looks like a it's like a mummy but with clear packing tape um but yeah you you don't use this as a reason to not send stuff in a plain white envelope i've sent many many cards uh, in a plain white envelope uh and i can say that it, it, i don't want to say for sure but i'd like to think that it's even a little bit more safe than than sending uh like a bubble mailer which might get tossed in with uh, some heavy packages and, and get crushed. Usually this is all going with like letter mail goes with letter mail. All right, next we have OK underscore contest underscore 9381 who says error Pikachu V card. That is a, they say, hi, how much do you think this rare card cost? This is, that is going to be an expensive boy. Um, first off, it's Pikachu. Second off, it's a chase card Pikachu. It's trainer gallery. Um, the, the artwork Trainer gallery artwork, absolutely amazing. Um, and the fact that it's cut like this, this thing is going to be, if you're selling it, expensive. Um, myself, personally, with error cards, uh, I have been, and I usually just prefer to like auction them off because it's it's hard to get an actual value or to like, ask a certain price of something like this. I always feel bad if I'm like asking too much for it, but if, if I'm looking to, to sell it, if people want it, I'm going to put it in an auction. People can bid on it, and we'll find out how much it's worth. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, if I had to guess on this, we're just guessing. Um, I'm gonna say anywhere between five hundred and a thousand dollars. If I had to guess what this would go, if you just slapped it on eBay in an auction, you go into the Discord, you, you go post your your link, your auction link in the uh, eBay self promotion, um, and and we'll get it posted on on Twitter, Instagram, get you some extra views on that. And I think this is one of those cases where it's extra beneficial just because um, people might not necessarily, people may be collecting errors. Maybe they're collecting Pikachu errors. Maybe they're collecting Pikachu and they didn't know that they wanted an error, but now they want this one. That's the kind of stuff that like the more eyes you get on this, the better. Uh, so I think it's extra beneficial to use that uh, that free service, the Discord uh, eBay self-promotion. All you got to do, list your item on eBay, sell it yourself. Uh, it's kind of like a consignment service, but you're just selling it, you're selling it yourself. And it supports the channel. So thank you for everyone that's been participating in that. I think it's an awesome, uh, it was an awesome idea. And it's an awesome program that uh, is going to continue. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my best guess. And and I know it's a pretty wide window between 500 and 1,000. Uh, it could go for more than that. It could go for less than that. It just depends how many people are interested in it at the time, I guess. Uh, and what they're willing to pay for it. How much they wanted at the time. You only need a couple people to, to decide that they really want it uh, for it to, for it to do anything, or you know. So maybe it, if it gets overlooked, you know, like it brings in basically nothing. And speaking of basically nothing, here we have someone uh, who uh, is a wreak havoc, uh, and is saying a nine dollar base set Zard plus others. I think I scored a good deal. I don't totally understand what is going on with this exactly. Uh, Cash converters being like a pawn shop, um, and they're in the. I think they're in Australia. Yeah, odd. Um, AUD, $10. My local secondhand shop had a bunch of Watsi Air Slabs for under $10, including a $9 base set Zard and also a first edition hollowed fossil Dragonite for $6. Yeah, that's a good deal. Awesome deal. Um, we are going to see that these are... What are the subgrades on this? Centering eight, <laughs> centering eight surface. Corners and edges all got ones, I guess. Um, I don't, I don't know if CTA is, you, you want to even necessarily go by what they're telling you there. Um, it does look like a decent binder copy. It's beat, but for, for $10 or $9, $9, like you can't really go wrong based at Charizard. Uh, why not? Right. Even though it's a three P, um, probably just crack it out. If you wanted to put it in a binder, it's basically a binder copy. I don't know why someone wasted money sending it in. I don't know what the actual charge is to submit cards to CTA, but I would imagine it's probably like 15. It's probably more than what the cards are selling for here, which again, it's just like if you're going to grade cards, if you're going to buy graded cards, um, make sure you're not wasting your money and not adding any value to whatever you're grading. I don't know how this stuff, how in the world did this stuff end up at the pawn shop? 
Like, how much did the pawn shop pay for this? It must have been nearly nothing. So I don't know if, like, someone that didn't know what the cards were worth had these that somebody else, uh, maybe they passed away, maybe they, maybe they forgot their stuff, maybe it's an angry ex-girlfriend that decided to sell the stuff on them. But uh, who knows? It's weird, but uh, that is what it is. Um, we can, I guess we'll take a look through here real quick. The, again, the pricing makes no sense. We get, like, $19 on that one, $12 on this one. Um... I don't know necessarily why. Uh, the Snorlax was $9, maybe the higher grade. They thought it was worth more money. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting nonetheless. I think we'll probably call it with this one. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to another Reddit one. We get the dogs barking. I think someone's at the door. But uh, I'll see you guys tonight in the happy hour chat. Everyone's welcome. Come on in. Um, love you. Join the Discord. See you next time. Bye.